This week, we're getting ready for Star Wars Jedi Survivor and more. Star Wars Jedi Survivor arrives tomorrow. The long-awaited sequel video game to the smash hit Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is bringing the Stinger Mantis crew back together again for an adventure five years after the first story. Pull on your ponchos, give your BD unit a nice oil bath, and get ready to be immersed in the journey of our hero Cal Kestis. Star Wars Jedi Survivor is on its way. Star Wars Young Jedi Adventures will debut on Star Wars Day, May the 4th, but a new short dropped earlier this week introducing the dread pirate Tabor and his crew. Can Kai listen and Nubs save the day? As far as we're concerned, Nubs can do anything he puts his mind to. Catch up on all six shorts, then gather the younglings in your life to watch the series debut next week. Last week brought us the finale of The Mandalorian Season 3, and we're still thinking about what it all means for the future of Mandalore and its people. In the most recent chapters of the ongoing series, Grogu got a new family name, a shiny new piece of armor, and a mech suit with the added bonus of simple speech. Yes, yes, yes. A bonus for Grogu, at least. Not so much for his dad. No. Yes. Hey, Grogu, no. Mando found his way back to the living waters below the surface of Mandalore with a lot of help from Bo-Katan, and Bo managed to bring together two warring factions, the rule-following armorer and the children of the Watch and the Mandalorians who think it's a-okay to take your helmet off whenever you feel like it. Like freezing soup! The Darksaber continued to change hands, Lizzo and Jack Black joined the galaxy, and Moff Gideon's master plan went up in flames. Plus, Grogu jumped and jumped and jumped for joy! And snacks. Grogu's all of us. Watch the full season for yourself now, only on Disney+. Plus. To be honest, the Mandalorian could have been called Everybody Loves Grogu because everyone loves the little guy including the cast and crew of the series. When we had a chance to sit down with Jon Favreau, Dave Filoni, Pedro Pascal, and Rick Famuyiwa, you know we had to talk about the show's tiniest star. Speaking of anomalies, Grogu, we haven't even mentioned him yet. We gotta uh -huh. talk about him. Uh -huh. Where does the name Grogu come from? I came up with it. Uh huh. I thought he'd have to have a name that was a little bit, he's cute, but he's a little ugly. He's ugly he's cute. He's adorable. But he's adorable <laughs> because he's not perfect. He's He's got the cheeks, but he's got like weird little <laughs> pointy teeth and he's got weird peach fuzz. And so, you know, the, in our design, when he looked too cute, he didn't look right. But we found that right balance and Star Wars is always about, everything's a little bit weird, but, but cute anyway. From just the design of the character, obviously being referential to a character from the original film, Film that everyone knows and loves and that species that has a lot of mystery around it. There is just a kind of mix of all of it that I think really made this character connect. Can you quantify what it is about Grogu that just makes everyone 10 years old again? The first time I saw was this illustration actually, which mm. immediately I understood they had an ace in the hole with a character like that. And then in person, I would say that you wouldn't believe how realistic the puppet is and that has to do with the incredible uh, design team behind uh, making them. There's an innocence about him, obviously, but there's also, you know, sort of this transformative power that he has in terms of the lives around him change, and probably more than than he does himself, you know. And and I think there's something about him that makes us want to both take care of him, but also examine who we are. What we experience as an audience, the show is is what you experience when when you're you're with him on set. And there's a remote control Grogu that you can get in a wide, and he's moving around and and in, in, in the scene, and then you get the one that's like connected to NASA. Uh huh. And, right. <laughs> um, that you can use for a close-up and makes for an incredible scene partner. It was also hard because no matter what we named him, it wasn't going to be, it could yeah. be Baby Yoda. Which well, the, is big, what I the call key them. there was, remember I was saying that when we shot the scene, because I was directing that episode, I felt it was good to have Ahsoka there because she's like a good balancing point. Mando at first reacted like the audience, like Grogu, that's strange. But when he says it, Grogu? Grogu looks at him. And I always related that to like when I have a dog and the dog starts to learn its name and you say its name, it looks at you. It's the most heartwarming thing. And so when you see that he recognizes his name and that until Ahsoka says his name, that he probably hasn't heard it in a long time. Thank you for the gift of Grogu. I love when he does that. That's it for this week, but for more on these stories and other news from around the galaxy, check out StarWars.com and be sure to join us right here for This Week in Star Wars every Thursday. Thanks for watching and may the force be with you.